Hi, and a good evening, everybody. Lauren Brown, along with Harry Carey and Jimmy Pearsall from Comiskey Park in Chicago, Illinois, as the White Sox continue this homestand as they take on the Texas Rangers and this the first of a two-game set against Texas and this the third game of a 15-game homestand. As you know, the White Sox now have won 15 of their last 17 and recently have won three in a row and eight of their last nine. But I think something that has gone unnoticed is the fact that here at Comiskey Park now, they have won seven consecutive ball games in this park. You may recall they won five in a row before going on the road, taking eight out of ten, and they have come back to sweep a two-game set from the Cleveland Indians. The White Sox have been in some tough ball games of late. The last six ball games have all been one-run ball games. The White Sox winning five of the one-run games and losing once, and that was to Texas four to three after they had beaten the Rangers the previous night four to three. Tonight, Ron Schuler, who got that first victory against the Texas Rangers in relief four to three, will be going for the White Sox, and it'll be left-hander John Matlack. Formerly of the New York Mets, who will make his first appearance ever against the Chicago White Sox in a regular season game. We've had some rain here tonight, but we'll be getting underway in just a couple of minutes. The tarp has been taken off the field. It looks in good shape, and we're ready for baseball. And we'll be ready for the starting lineups for you right after this word. If you're in the market for a new giant screen color TV and you demand value, quality, and dependability, well, now's the right time to buy. It's clearance sale time at your Zenith dealer. The 1979 models are on their way, and your Zenith dealer must clear out the 78s. And you'll be pleasantly surprised at the drastic reductions you'll discover on giant screen 25-inch models, as well as the wide variety of beautiful decorator furniture styles available. You can save up to $110 on 1978 giant screen color TV. As little as $548.88, buys you all the performance-proved features of Zenith 25-inch color TV. And that's not all. There's inflation fighting prices on all other Zenith products during the clearance sale. So you better make plans to visit your participating Zenith dealer now while he still has a variety of models to choose from. Remember, for value, quality, dependability, don't miss the clearance sale of 1978 models at your Zenith dealer. Prices quoted, distributor suggested retail prices. Let's take a look at the starting lineup first off for the visiting Texas Rangers. Toby Harrow will lead it off at third base. Bump Wills will bat second and play second. Bobby Bonds will be in right field batting third. Al Oliver will be in center field batting in the fourth spot. Richie Zisk, who is a designated hitter for three games in Texas, will be in left field and he'll bat fifth. The main reason why this has occurred, Oliver going to left, and or rather from left to center and just going to from the DH to the left field spot is that Juan Benicas had his hand broken the other night when hit on a two-strike pitch on the hand by Doug Bird. And he is out for at least 15 days. Mike Hargrove will be batting in the sixth spot at first base. Batting seventh, John Lowenstein, the designated hitter. Jim Sundberg from nearby Galesburg will be doing the catching. He'll bat eighth, and Burt Campanera is playing for the first time against the White Sox this year. Will be at shortstop, and he'll bat ninth. On the mound, John Matlack in his American League debut this year. He has won five and lost six with a 2.72 earned run average, making his first appearance ever in regular season action against the Chicago White Sox. For the White Sox, it'll be Ralph Gar leading it off in left field. Alan Bannister will bat second in center field. Chet Lemon will be the designated hitter, and he'll hit third. Wayne Nordhagen will be batting cleanup in right field. Lamar Johnson at first base, batting fifth. Bill Naharodney will be doing the catching, and he'll bat sixth. George Orta will be batting seventh at second base. Don Kessinger batting eighth at shortstop, and Greg Pryor batting ninth at third base. On the mound, Ron Schuler, he has won one, and he has lost one. The one game he won was over Texas, 4-3, to three, six good innings of relief. The game he lost was when he got knocked out in the first inning at Anaheim. Right now, Billy Hunter, the manager of the Texas Rangers, and Bob Lemon and tonight's umpires at home plate. They'll be going over the ground rules as this is the first visit of the year for the Texas Rangers here at Comiskey Park. The Rangers got beat last night on a one-hitter by Rich Gale, 5 to nothing at Kansas City. They've been going hot of late. They've now won six of their last nine and four of those victories over Kansas City, but Gale stopped them. The only hit occurred off the bat of Al Oliver, who tripled in the eighth inning. 
So the Rangers come in here tonight beginning a road trip. The White Sox continuing this 15-game homestand. And the White Sox coming off a tremendous come-from-behind victory last night, trailing 9 to nothing to Cleveland and going on to win the ball game 10 to 9. Let's take a look at some other baseball activity. California's at Baltimore tonight. The Angels lost a couple at Boston. Baltimore has won 12 in a row, the longest winning streak in the major leagues this year. Those, there is no score in the bottom of the third. Toronto is hosting Milwaukee. And Milwaukee, Thomas, it is 14th home run of the year. That came in the fourth inning with a man on. McKay hit a home run for Toronto. Well, that game is over, and Milwaukee won it 7-5. to five. Milwaukee has now won seven in a row, and Toronto has lost seven in a row. That was the first game of the doubleheader. Well, that Toronto club really unlucky. That is their third consecutive doubleheader, three doubleheaders in four days. Boston leads Oakland, 8 to nothing. That game is at the end of two innings of play. Seattle at New York just underway. There's no score in the first inning. And Cleveland will be at Minnesota tonight. And Detroit will be at Kansas City. Over the National League, Cincinnati got three in the first and held on to defeat the Chicago Cubs 3-1 to one today. The Giants, behind Vita Blue, defeated Philadelphia 2-1. to one. So the Cubs remain two games in front of the Philadelphia Phillies. Atlanta is hammering the Cardinals 12 to nothing at the end of two innings of play. The Mets will be at Los Angeles. Pittsburgh will be at Houston later tonight. And Montreal will be at San Diego. And ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. sung tonight by the Kelly Girl Chorus. And the Chicago White Sox take the field. Baltimore just came up with three runs in the bottom of the third inning, and they lead California by a score of three to nothing. The White Sox taking the field. Lamar Johnson at first. Listen to the standing ovation they're getting. Ron Schuer on the mound getting ready to get his warm-up tosses defensively. Lamar Johnson's at first. George Orta at second. Don Kessinger at shortstop, and Greg Pryor at third. The outfield of Ralph Garr in left field, Alan Bannister in center, and Wayne Nordhagen in right. They're throwing out the first ball, and Naha Rodney's waiting to get it. I wish somebody would throw it to him. There they go. Naha is waiting to warm up Schuler here after he had warmed up down the left field line. A reminder that this ball game is, and program is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Chicago White Sox solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this play-by-play -play description and account of this game without the express written consent of the Chicago White Sox is prohibited. Harry Carey, Jimmy Pearsall, and myself, Lauren Brown, are employees of and are paid by WMAQ Radio for our play-by-play -play descriptions and accounts of these games. 
WMAQ and the Chicago White Sox share mutual rights of announcer approval. Rod Schuler getting in his warm-up tosses has won one and lost one this year. His lone loss came when he started at California, got knocked out in the first inning. Hit a couple of men in that inning. And then he came back in a strong relief performance in his last outing to win his first game of the year, going six innings against the Texas Rangers. Allowing only one run on four hits, Larry Legro came in to save it for him as he picked up his lone win of the year, four to three. A year ago, Schuler had one start against Texas, but he beat the Rangers, did not beat the Rangers in that game, nor did he lose. But in relief against Texas last year, he beat them nine to five. So since coming over to the American League, he is 2-0 against the Texas Rangers. Toby Harrow will lead it off, the Ranger third baseman, hitting 203, two homers, and 14 RBIs. And some of the players wearing green derbies going towards the seats and tossing them into the seats for the fans. It'll be Hera, Wills, and Bonds. Well, we had some rain prior to the ball game tonight. That may have cut this crowd down a little bit. Looks like we might have all around 18,000 here tonight. But the weather has cleared up as of right now, so if you're in the area, come on by. 61 degrees, the wind's out of the southeast to 12. Hera hitting 203, two homers and 14 RBIs. Here's the pitch by Schuler, and it's a strike in the inside corner. The White Sox a year ago won six and lost nine against Texas. Right-hander ready, the one-strike pitch way outside of ball. Outfield playing Hera around to the left. But unfortunately, in this ballpark, Texas won five out of seven. Here's the pitch, and it's a strike in the outside corner. Larry Barnett calling the balls and strikes tonight. Jim Evans is over at first base. Darrell Merrill, Derwood Merrill at second, and Marty Springstad at third. Here's the pitch. Swing and a grounder up the middle. Ford is there. Drops the ball. Got it off the tip of his glove. A bounder over the pitcher, Schuler. Horta going to his right and charging. Got it off the tip of his glove, and it dropped to his feet, and it goes as an air. So the Rangers get their leadoff man on, and Bump Wills, the batter, hitting 219, five homers, and seven RBIs. Now, Kessinger goes in to have a word with Naharadney and Schuler. Lamar Johnson will be holding the runner on at first. Fred Koenig coaching down at first, Pat Corrales doing the coaching at third. And Bump Wills, the batter, switch hitter, hitting 219, five homers and 17 RBIs. One of his five homers against the White Sox. White Sox have been involved in six consecutive one-run ball games. As the right-hander delivers, there's a pitch on the outside part of the plate of ball. And they have won five of them. White Sox this year in one-run games have been involved in 18, winning 10 and losing eight. Right-hander ready. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a grounder up the middle. Orta has it. Flips to short for one. The relay. Double play. That goes from four to six to three. So the air is erased here. Not on the board, but on the base pass. And Bobby Bonds, the batter. Give him a boo. Bobby playing with the White Sox earlier this year before being traded to Texas for Claudel Washington. Bobby hitting 245, seven homers, 19 RBIs, fouls one upstairs. Now bounces back into the box seats. Bobby has one of his home runs against the White Sox. Here's the pitch inside of all. Bonds had a hit in each of the three games against the White Sox. Went one for four every night. Here's the pitch. And it's fouled away. So he's hitting 250 against his former teammates. 
with a homer and two RBIs. Schuler in the windup, the one-two pitch. Cold strike three struck him out. So in the inning, no runs, no hits, one air, nobody left on. So we're at the end of a half inning of play. Texas nothing, the White Sox coming to bat. Well, they've got a lot of signs out in left field for Richie Zisk. Richie who? Zisk is a bum. And the one that said Zisk is a bum, it's a Z-I-S with the dollar sign. And Richie just dropped a ball thrown to him by Al Oliver. The fans are all over him. And Richie, in response, tips his hat to him. Zisk is playing the outfield now after being a D.H. because of Juan Paniquas. The premier defensive center fielder in the American League had his hand broken two nights ago on a two-strike pitch by Doug Bird. So Al Oliver, who says he's a better center fielder than he is any other outfield position, is in center tonight with Bobby Bonds in right and Richie Zisk in left. No score as we go to the bottom of the first. Ralph Gar will lead it off against John Matlock. Black has won five and lost six with an earned run average of 2.72. He has lost all five of his starts on the road yet this year, but the Rangers have averaged less than two runs per game in his five starts. Ralph Gar will lead it off. The first pitch by Matt Black. Cut out and fouled up on the roof. Gar hitting 273, two homers and 15 RBIs. Ralph with a hit at eight of his last nine ball games. Left-hander in the windup. Here's the one-strike pitch outside of all. Ball and one strike. Matlack in the windup. Harry in at third. Here's the pitch. Hits off of the glove of Sunberg. I don't know if it hit the dirt or not. Blocked by the Texas catcher. Off his glove. Two balls and a strike. Mike Hargrove at first. Bump Wills at second. Bert Campanaris at short. And Toby Hare at third with Jim Sunberg behind the plate. Here's the 2-1 delivery to Gar. High of all, three and one. Well, the Yankees and the Phillies made a deal today. Former White Sox outfielder Jay Johnstone has gone to the New York Yankees. Here's the 3-1 pitch. High of all, he walked it. Matt Black this year has walked only 24 in 92 and two-third innings while striking out 52, which is high in the ball club. He's completed five of his 12 starts. And the batter is Alan Bannister, hitting 196 with two RBIs, playing in center field again tonight. No score, we're in the bottom of the first, so we're off to a better start tonight than we were last night. But Cleveland got four in the first, four in the second, and one in the third. Here's a pitch that he wanted a bunt. The umpire at first says he did not go around as Sunberg appealed. One ball and no strikes. Now Hera goes in to say something to Matlack and promptly makes a U-turn and goes back to third. White Sox trailed nine to nothing at the end of two and a half innings last night. It came on to win ten to nine. Bannister waits. Gar with a leadoff of first. There's a toss over there and he's back in time. Vinny Minoso doing the coaching at first tonight. Per usual, Bobby Knopp over at third. Left-hander ready. The 1-0 pitch, here it is. There's a swing on the grounder up the middle. Campanaris has it, flips the second for one. The relay, not in time. Campanaris had trouble getting rid of it. And Wills, pretty much the same way, and Bannister with his speed prevented the double play from being turned over. Gar is out of the play, six to four with Allen at first and one out and Chet Levin the batter. Levin hitting 288 with five homers and 21 RBIs. Chet looking for his first hit in the homestand. You know the remarkable thing about this winning streak too, 15 out of 17, including the last three in a row. 
They've done it primarily without Lemon in the lineup, who's been bothered with those leg and groin pulls. A toss over to first, the runner back. Left-hander delivers to Levin, and it's a breaking ball for a strike. The Yankees got Jay Johnstone from the Philadelphia Phillies in return for Raleigh Eastwick. It was a waiver deal. They both had to clear waivers in each league for that deal to take place, and it has improved the Philadelphia bullpen. A lot of people wondering why in the world the Yankees would want Jay Johnstone, another left-handed hitter. They've got a ton of them. One strike in the batter, maybe for his defense. There goes the runner. Here's a toss over to first. Throw by Hargrove. Gets away from Wills, and Bannister is safe. Matlack threw to Hargrove, and Wills could not handle the ball, and Bannister is on with a stolen base. So the White Sox with a runner in scoring position and one out. Up, no stolen base, it's an error on the first baseman. No stolen base, E3 is the call by Jerome Holtzman, the official score. Here's the pitch way outside of all, off the mid of the catcher, but not far enough to allow Bannister to go on. Seattle came up with five runs in the second inning, and they lead the Yankees five to one. Boy, the Mariners really have been in a tailspin. They've lost six in a row, 13 of the last 15 games. And the reason they're only 14 and a half games out, or 14 even, is because Oakland's lost six straight. One ball, one strike, now time is called. Second game at Toronto, Augustine going against Garvin. Toronto playing in their third consecutive doubleheader. Three doubleheaders in the last four days. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a shot to left. Going to drop in for a base hit. Here comes Bannister challenging Richie's this arm. The throw to the plate. He is safe. It gets away. Here goes the runner going to second. He dives in there safely. This throw was a bad one, and Bannister scores one to nothing on the throw in. Chet Lemon, who got his first hit of the homestand here, goes into second base. putting the runner in scoring position and the White Sox taking advantage of it. <laughs> Chet Lemon driving in his 22nd run of the year and the batter is Wayne Nordhagen. Getting 278, two homers and 20 RBIs. Wayne had a big night in that game against Cleveland last night going three for five with three RBIs. Matlack working out of the stretch. Here's the pitch to Nordhagen. Curveball for a strike. Reynolds hit a grand slam home run for Seattle in that ball game. A grand slammer. Oh, there have been a ton in the American League this year. I think at least anywhere from 11 to 15 have been hit. Matlack out of the stretch. Runner at second with one out. Here's the pitch way outside and high of all. Wayne Nordhagen. Billy Smith has just hit a homer in the fourth for Baltimore. They lead California now at least four to nothing in the bottom of the fourth. They're still batting. Matlack out of the stretch. The 1-1 pitch to Nordhagen. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball. Cleveland at Minnesota. David Clyde going against Roger Erickson. Former Texas Jeff, Texan Jeff Burroughs. Just hit his sixth homer of the year in the fourth with nobody on. Atlanta leading the Cardinals four to one. The board earlier had Atlanta out in front 12 to one. That was incorrect. They lead four to one. Left-hander ready. Here's the 2-2 pitch. There's a swing and a smash. Foul ball. Just barely foul. Right in front of Marty Springstad, the third base umpire. That would have brought Lemon home for sure. And a count of ball and two strikes. Detroit did not score at Kansas City in the first inning. Tigers going with Billingham tonight. Splithorn pitching for Kansas City. Left-hander ready. Now a play at second. The throw. He is safe.
Levin had a dive back in. Hopefully he's all right. Boy, I tell you, with Chet, you can't tell him not to take too many chances. That's just his nature. But the fact that he has been having problems with a strained leg muscle pull and a strained groin pull, I'd say, hey, hang close to that bag, Chester. But that's not him. He's just a very aggressive ball player. That just is his makeup. Now Nordhagen steps out of the box. Outfield playing Wayne to pull. Matlack ready. A one-two pitch is on the way. Swing and a foul coming upstairs. He reached out after a curveball. Hits the edge of the roof and bounced down into the box seats. 61 degrees here tonight, warmer tonight than it has been the last two nights, so we had a little rain before the ball game. Wins out of the southeast to 12, going to the right field corner to the left field corner. Matlack ready. The one-two pitch, there goes Lemon, swinging a grounder to Hare at third, he tags down, he got him, throws the first double play. Chet Lemon ran right into the third baseman who had fielded the ball on the hit and run. And Hara put the tag on him, then threw over to first for the double play. Lemon is out five. Nordhagen five to three for the double play. But in the inning, the White Sox take advantage of the Texas air and the lack of the throwing arm by Zisk and come up with one run on one hit, one air, and nobody left on. So we go to the second inning. The White Sox won. Texas nothing. Newton standing over the ball. This 10-foot putt is for a birdie. There it goes. He has it. Hi, this is Kurt Gowdy for your Clark Lift truck dealer. The game of golf has come a long way since its origin in Scotland. 300 years ago, golfers played with leather balls stuffed with feathers. Later, it was discovered that hard center balls improved the game. Selecting the right equipment is important in any game. Efficiency in material handling depends on matching a lift truck to its job and then keeping that lift truck working with proper service. This is where your Clark dealer can help. And he can also help you train your operators to become safer and more productive. Talk to him today and tell him Gowdy sent you. Talk to your Clark Lift of Chicago dealer on the south side where service comes first. That's Clark Lift of Chicago, the lift truck people. Lauren Brown back in Comiskey Park as we go to the second inning. White Sox out in front here by a score of one to nothing. The Rangers lead it off. Al Oliver, but a cleanup hitter, steps in. He hit 417 against the White Sox in that three-game weekend series with two RBIs. Went five for 12, including a triple. Oliver hitting 291, eight homers, 39 RBIs, now playing in right field or rather in center field. Here's a swing and a fly ball to left. Ralph Gar coming in. He's there. He's got it. One out. Now I'm not going to tell you who's coming up. We'll just let the crowd tell you. Richie Zisk is the batter, hitting 286, 10 homers, and 39 RBIs. Like Bobby Bonds, he hit 250 against the White Sox last season and drove in two runs. Swings and misses, strike one and a breaking ball by Schuler. Zisk played for the White Sox last year after coming over from the Pirates and then signed a 10-year, $3 million contract. Right-hander in the windup, here's the pitch. And he just missed outside a ball. Zisk is 31 years old. Here's the 1-1 delivery. Swing and a fly ball to left. Gar is there. He waits. He takes it. Two out. So Zisk's contract is good until he's 41 years old. Bobby Bonds just signed a five-year contract, which he's very pleased about, with the Texas Rangers. At two million. Mike Hargrove's the batter. Hargrove hit well against the White Sox last week. Four hits and ten times up. White Sox swept that, or not swept it, but they took the series two games to one. All of them were one-run decisions. 
White Sox won four to three, then they lost four to three, then they won the finale two to one. Here's a pitch inside, a ball goes back to the screen. Bonds is 32 and Zisk is 31. Here's the pitch and it's a called strike. One ball, one strike in the batter. Outfield playing around to the left. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch, and it's inside a ball. Mike Hargrove, a 266 hitter, four homers and 20 RBIs. He's a left-handed hitter. The outfield plays him to go the other way. Ron Schuler in the windup. The 2-1 delivery. Swing and a fly ball to left center. Bannister racing over and back. He's there, and he's got it as he races onto the warning track. The wind looked like it might have got a hold of that ball. And Bannister had to put the foot speed on in the last 10 steps, and he got it. And the Rangers are retired 1-2-3 here in the second inning. So we go to the bottom of the second. It's the White Sox 1, Texas nothing. I've got grease on my fingers, oil on my shoes. I'm always under the hood. But it wouldn't change places with anyone else, even if I could. I've worked on every car, big and small, every kind of engine, too. And there's one thing that applies to them all, whether they're old or new. You can't buy a better plug for any kind of car than champion. You can't buy a better plug no matter where you are than champion. Champion's number one in the world, they're number one in your car. Some folks don't mind working in a big place, being part of a team. I prefer just me and that engine, nobody in between. You can't buy a better plug for any kind of car than champion. No, you can't buy that no matter where you're on the champion. You can't buy that no matter where you're on the champion. No, you can't. The time is right. That feeling's coming through. Real beer lovers know only one beer will do. Strohs for the real beer lovers. Strohs taste like no other. Strohs for the real beer lover. From one beer lover to another Strohs. The Stroh Brewery Company, Detroit, Michigan. Lauren Brown back at Comiskey Park. As Lamar Johnson leads it off here on WMAQ Radio, Chicago, Illinois. Lamar... Hitting 243, four homers and 24 times up. He's had five hits in his last three ball games and 12 appearances with two RBIs. And he takes a strike in the outside corner. So that hopefully is an indication that Lamar is back in the groove. Usually when he got out of a slump, he'd just have a couple of hits in one night and then go right back in it. But he has hit consistently the last three games. Swings and hits a drive. Left center field going way back. Just back to the wall and he's got it up against the wall in left center field. So there's one out. Lamar giving that ball a ride, but not quite far enough. Well, I'd like to send greetings to Ronald Wackerlin of Ron Westfall Chevrolet. Ron is our Chevrolet salesman of the day. Bill Naharotny, the batter, hitting 247, five homers and 22 RBIs. White Sox catcher batting from the right side. Matlack delivers. The pitch, curveball, misses outside, ball one. This is the first of a two-game set against the Rangers. Steve Stone will be pitching here tomorrow night against Doc Medich. A fastball, cut on, drilled up the middle. Campanaris reaches down, grabs it, throws in the dirt. He pulled the first baseman off the bag, and now Harotny is safe. Nice stop by Campanaris, but then he threw wide. And that is the second Texas error of the night. Well, last night, the White Sox got an assist by three Cleveland Airs to score 10 runs in two innings. It was the 10th time of the 14 wins that the White Sox have collected in this stretch of the 15 wins, 10 of the 15 wins. They've had big assists from the Airs by the opposition. Already here tonight, an error followed by a single has scored a run, and now an error by Campanaris. And the batter is George Ordu, who got credit for the game-winning hit last night, shortens up as if to bunt and takes it low of all. 
George now leads the club with five game-winning hits. And his game-winning hit last night was a fielder's choice on a ground out. A runner at first, one out. That is the... Here's the pitch, and it's low a ball. Well, they flash that up as the third Texas air. There was an air on the throw in the last inning by Hargrove. Lemon single was definitely a single. Here's the pitch. Ice. Here's the bunt foul. With Lemon going to second after he singled, that was ruled an error, I believe. So there were two errors by Texas in that last inning and one here. That's the only play it could have been. Two balls and a strike to Orta. John Matlack out of the stretch. Here's the 2-1 pitch. A bunt. Third baseman has it, but in foul territory. Hit the line, but Hera grabbed it foul. So now Harodney goes back to first. Well, George Ballantyne of Chicago wants to know how many double plays the White Sox have turned over this year. They have turned over, including tonight, 61. Want to know how many the club turned over a year ago at this time? It was right around 30. Here's a toss over to first. Now Harodney back. Want to send out happy birthday wishes to old friend Leo Pittenger tonight. Celebrating his 69th birthday. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a foul. Coming back, it'll be out of play. Sunberg giving chase, but it hits the edge of the upper deck railing and goes down into the box seats. Now it goes down to the TV screen and set up. And a youngster goes down after it. Two balls and two strikes to Orta. Outfield plays him as an opposite field hitter. Well, when Georgie's in the groove, he hits that open area out there in right center consistently. Leads the club in homers and RBIs. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a foul. He had a good cut. Back to the screen. The White Sox are out hitting the high-priced Rangers, and they have out rbi them. Sox as a club hitting 263, the Rangers 248. This was to be one of their strengths hitting. Here's the 2-2 delivery to order. Swing and a grounder foul to the right side. The White Sox have also driven in more runs than Texas, 219 to 207. The only offensive category of the major three that the Rangers lead is in home runs, 42 to 37. Two balls and two strikes to the batter. Left-hander working out of the stretch. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out with a breaking ball. So there's two out. That's the first strikeout for Matlack. And the batter is Don Kessinger, hitting 266 with 10 RBIs and has just been superb defensively. John Hatch, Pat Halloran, Terry Olson, Terry and Mike Noon, and... Susan Ruda are here. Without their sister, Jean Ruda, couldn't make it tonight. Rooting for a White Sox victory. Here's the pitch, and it's high a ball. Also, Billy Pierce, former White Sox great, is here tonight. One ball and no strikes to Kessinger. Runner at first with two out in the bottom of the second. White Sox leading one to nothing. Matlock tosses over to first, the runner back. Baltimore going after their 13th consecutive win leads California five to nothing in the bottom of the fifth. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a fly ball to left. Zisk going over to his right. Now he's going back to the warning track and he's got it. As Kessinger gave that ball a ride, the wind helped it quite a bit, but that retires the side. No runs, no hits, one air, one man left on. We're at the end of two, White Sox one, Texas nothing. And from our vantage point, for some reason we didn't see it, Jerome Hel Holtzman of the Chicago Sun-Times, the official score, when Bannister was at second, getting there on the air by Hargrove, Chet Lemon singled home, and 
The Richie's this throw hit Bannister. Chet Lemon had stopped at first, and when the throw hit Bannister, then he went on to second, so the air charged to Richie Zist. That was the second air, and then the third air in the second inning committed by Campanaris. So we want to make sure you're up to date as well as ourselves as John Lowenstein leads it off the designated hitter tonight, hitting 279 with a homer and eight RBIs, batting from the left side. Schuler just missed with the ball. Here's the second delivery, and it's a strike in the inside corner. Ron Schuler, free agent from the White Sox sign for the Minnesota Twins. Goes into the windup, the 1-1 pitch. Swing and a grounder to the right side. Lamar Johnson has it. Makes the unassisted out at first, and there's one down. The only man to get on tonight was Heron in it, leadoff air. And then he was erased on a double play. So there's one out, and Jim Sunberg from Galesburg, Illinois, the batter, hitting 314, two homers, and nine RBIs. Schuler making his second straight appearance against Texas. Big guy, 6'4", 240 pounds, turned 30 years of age in April. Spent five years in the National League before going over to Minnesota last year. He was a starting pitcher, and he was used in the bullpen, and the pitches a ball to Sunberg, a right-handed hitter. Won eight games and saved another three. Made seven starts and relieved 45 times a year ago. Here's a pitch outside, ball two. Signed originally by the Atlanta Braves. Played with Atlanta in 72 and three, then with the Phillies in 74, five and six in Minnesota last year. Here's the pitchers, a swing and a shot right to Ralph Gar and left, he's got it. Probably the best hit ball of the night. But right at Gar as Sundberg lines out for the second out of the inning. And Burt Campanaris, who's been plagued with a couple of injuries. Hitting 179, no homers and nine RBIs, playing in his first game against the White Sox. Schuler is from Kansas. He's a graduate of Hayes, Kansas High School. Then he stayed home and went to Fort Hayes State College. And the first pitch to Campanaris is a ball. Seattle now leading the Yankees 6-1. to one. Right-hander in the windup. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Inside of the corner, a strike. Campanera is moving up on the ball as if he was going to bunt. Count evens up at 1-1. One one. Greg Pryor playing parallel to the bag at third. 1-0. White Sox leading. We're in the third. Right-hander in the windup. Here's the pitch. Swinging a grounder left side. Pryor to his left. Can't get it as it shorts hops him. And Campanaris is on. Greg went over to his left, had his mid out to get it, and it hit in front of his feet. And that may be the fifth air of the ball game. Nancy Faust and the organ playing, don't blame me. So we await the official decision. It's an air. That is the fifth air in the ball game here in three innings. Texas has made three, costing them a run. The White Sox have made two. And the first one did not cost them a run. Hopefully this will not. So Toby Harris, the batter, got on in an air by Orta his first time up. Right-handed hitting third baseman, Schuler tosses over to first. Campanaris is back. Campanaris this year has stolen nine bases in the 11 attempts. Not going. Here's the pitchers. A swing and a foul down the right side. Out of play. A year ago, Campanaris stole 27. His high in the major leagues was in 62 in 62 stolen bases in 68 and in 69 at Oakland. Signed originally with the athletic organization. Spent three and a half years in Kansas City. And he was in Oakland from 68 to 76, then with Texas last year. There's a good breaking pitch for a strike. Error in the hole, no balls and two strikes. Toby Hera. Shortstop two years ago, went to third last year from Sissonville, West Virginia. Shooter out of the stretch. Here's the pitch high and inside. A ball throw to second. And Campanaris is safe. The ball gets off of Orta's glove and goes going to third as Campanaris. Kessinger retrieves it and throws it in. That'll be the third error of the ball game. Six errors already here in the contest.
That'll be on the throw, so it's an error on Naharadny. Both clubs have committed three errors here in less than three innings of play, less than two and a half innings of play. Berta, Pryor, and Naharadny for the White Sox. Hargrove, Zisk, and Campaneras for Texas. One ball and two strikes in the batter. Campanera is coming down the line at third, trying to shake Schuler up. Here's the pitch. Just missed on the outside corner of all. Two balls and two strikes. The tying run at third with two out. Schuler ready. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Swing and a looper to left. Pitcher has it, throws the first. He got him. Nice play by Schuler because the bat came flying out of the hands of Hera going to the right of the mound. The ball went to the left, and Schuler at 6-4 looked over there and got it and threw to first to get him, and Hera may have pulled a muscle. Looks like he's limping down there, but that retires the side. No run, no hit, two errors in the inning, and one man left on. So we go to the bottom of the third. The White Sox won Texas nothing. Have we got fire for you when you lift your house with us? Have we got fire for you? We're a company you can trust. We're the world's biggest relocation association in the world. It's called Milo. It sends us fires. When it's time to sell your house, your nearby Relo member has the buyers you want in both in this area and even here from out of town, too. So if you're relocating, he can put you in touch with a Relo member wherever you're moving. There are over 135 Relo offices in Chicagoland and Berwyn, Cicero, and adjacent communities. It's Pav Hansen Realtors, dedicated to serving you. And in the south suburbs, it's Continental Real Estate South with five offices to serve you. We're part of Relo. Ward Brown back at Comiskey Park as we go to the bottom of the third. White Sox out in front, one to nothing. We've had six errors in two and a half innings. Three by Texas and three by the White Sox. The White Sox have been harmless errors as things turned out, but the Ranger errors have cost Texas and gained the White Sox the lone run of the ball game. Greg Pryor leads it off, the number nine hitter for the White Sox, hitting 322 with two RBIs. Greg has collected a hit in 11 of his last 12 ball games. Left-hander in the windup, John Matlack delivers, and it's a fastball for a strike. Matlack, 6'3", 200-pounder. Matlack, 28 years old. Here's the pitch inside of all. Been six and a half years with the Mets, winning 82 and losing 81. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss. Matt Lack, outfielder Al Oliver, and shortstop Nelson Norman came in an 11-player, 14 deal. Here's the pitch, swing and a foul. The Pirates, the Mets, the Rangers were three of the clubs in that deal. I think Atlanta may have been the other one. He was rookie of pitcher of the year in 1972. Here's the pitch. Swing and a grounder right back to the mound as he got jammed. Matlack throws him out, one out. In 72, he won 15 and lost 10. His best year was 76. He won 17 and lost 10 as far as record is concerned. As far as earned run average is concerned, his rookie year was his best. 2.32 earned run average, 244 innings pitched. So there's one out, and Ralph Gar, the batter, walked his first time up. Here's the pitch, and it's a strike in the inside part of the plate. Only one hit here in the ballgame. That was Chet Lemon single that drove home Alan Bannister after he got on in a fielder's choice and went to second on a throwing error by Hargrove after he apparently had been picked off at first. 
Matlack ready. Here's the one-strike delivery. Here's a swing and a base hit to center field. Ralph Gar making the turn. Oliver charges, and Gar will go back. That's the second hit off of Matlock. And the batter is Alan Bannister. Matlock's best performance in the National League was a one-hitter against Houston. And a one-hitter against St. Louis, coming in 73 and 74. Alan Bannister got out of the fielder's choice, tried to steal second, made it successfully on an air. And then came home on Lemon single. Here's the pitch of fastball for a strike. Came right over the top. One to nothing, White Sox leading. Trying to win their fourth in a row. Their ninth in their last 10 games. And their 16th in their last 18. Left-hander out of the stretch. Tosses to first, runner back. Cubs got beat by Cincinnati today. Three to one as the Reds got three in the first and went on to win. Giants... Helped the Cub cause by beating Philadelphia 2-1. to one. Here's the pitch. High and inside of all. So the Cubs remain two in front of Philadelphia. Montreal out at San Diego tonight with a win. Could move within two and a half. And the Giants keep pace over Cincinnati by virtue of their win. They're two games in front of the Reds. Here's a toss over to first. The runner back. Dodgers hosting the Mets. Have to win just to stay within five of San Francisco. One ball and one strike. Here's the pitch. There goes the runner. Swing and a foul ball down the right field line. Gar going into third. He's going to try to score. Bonds has trouble getting the ball. Here goes Bannister to third. He is in there safely at triple. It might be a double in an air, but the White Sox lead two to nothing. Bonds had trouble picking up that ball. And you've got to give credit to those fans down the right field line in the box seats. They let that ball alone. Nobody tried to mess with it. And the White Sox lead 2 to nothing as Bannister went the other way and drives in his third run of the year. Bonds had trouble picking the ball up. No air on the board, and we couldn't hear the official score, so a triple. And Chet Lemon, the batter, who drove in and run his first time up. Infield playing in with one out. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a pop-up coming back behind the plate. Sunberg giving chase. He... Did he get it? I can't see. No, he did not. One strike in the batter. He went under that one area that we're blocked out here, even when we stand. A one-out single and a triple have scored another run. Matlack out of the stretch. Left-hander ready. Lemon waits. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a looper in the right center. It's going to drop in a base hit. He got jammed. Lemon makes the turn at first. It's a three to nothing ball game as Bannister scores. Matlack jammed him and he looped it in the right center. So Lemon has driven in two runs and the White Sox lead three to nothing. The batter is Wayne Nordhagen. Hit a shot to third his last time up. Lemon was off with a pitch from second. Hera grabbed it, tagged Lemon out, and threw on to first to get Nordy. Kansas City just scored four runs in the third. Here's a swing and a foul behind Bobby Knopp at third. We're going to get activity in the Texas bullpen. Amos Otis has hit his ninth home run of the year with a man on in that third inning. Royals also got two more, and they lead four to nothing. Comer, a right-hander, is warming up in the Texas bullpen. Left-hander delivers. Here's the pitch. Call strike. Step throw to first. Lemon dives back in safely.
Steve Comer, a right-hander, warming up in the Texas bullpen with the White Sox leading here three to nothing in the third. A runner at first, still only one out. Here's the two-strike pitch. Hits his bat, goes back to the screen. He challenged him with a fastball in the inside part of the plate. Norty could not get his bat out of the way, and it hit it. Came back towards the screen. Seattle leading the Yankees 6-2 to two at the end of four. Minnesota leading, leading Cleveland 2 to nothing in the bottom of the third. Boston hammering Oakland 8 to nothing at the end of six. Here's the pitch. A pitch out runner not going. Baltimore leading California 5 to nothing to the bottom of the six. Kansas City, we mentioned, leading 4 to nothing at the end of three. Milwaukee won the first game of a doubleheader from Toronto. They're seventh in a row, seven to five. They leave the nightcap one to nothing at the end of two. Left-hander ready. Toss over to first, the runner back. Well, let's see. Boston should beat Oakland. And the White Sox beat Texas. Kansas City is winning. If they went on and won, the White Sox would move to two and a half towards first. Now, there's a long way to go. Here's a toss over to first, the runner back. Three to nothing. White Sox out in front. Left-hander ready. Here's the pitch. Way outside of all. Well, the Rangers had great success in this ballpark a year ago. They won five out of seven. They hit eight homers and 56, drove in 56 runs in this ballpark. Hit 322 as a team. Left-hander ready. Lemon with the lead off of first. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss on a curveball. Looked like he went after a bad pitch on the outside part of the plate. He struck him out. That's the second strikeout for Matlack. And Lamar Johnson, the batter, drove Richie Zisk about a foot or two in front of the wall at the 375 marker in left center field his first time up. White Sox have not hit a home run in a while. The last time they belted around Tripper came on June the 7th at Minnesota when Horta hit one off of Erickson. That was a week ago. Left-hander ready, a pitch out, runner not going. Three to nothing, the White Sox out in front with an unearned run, single home by Lemon in the first, and two runs here in the third, a single by Gar, a triple by Bannister, and a single by Lemon. Left-hander ready, here's the pitch. Swing and a chopper towards third. Hera has it behind the back, throws, and he got it. That retires the side, but in the inning, Lamar, thrown out by the third baseman, failed to mention where Hera was for you. In the inning, two runs on three hits. No errors, one man left on. We're at the end of three complete innings of play. I'm Lauren Brown, Harry Carey, and Jimmy Pearsall will be over in a minute. It's the White Sox three, Texas nothing. Good morning. It's 7 o'clock. just can't get up. And what is I need something. Breakfast. If mornings all seem hard to face, then stop here on your way. We'll serve you fast so you can relax and enjoy the rest of the day. That's a good breakfast. Thank you. Kids 12 and under can treat Dad to a free breakfast at McDonald's on Father's Day. See the Sunday comics in the Chicago Tribune, Sun-Times, Gary Post Tribune, and Hammond Times for coupon details. WMAQ. Where new red and white WMAQ is going to make me rich bumper stickers could be worth thousands of dollars in cash and prizes to you. We have over $200,000 in cash and prizes, and we're giving it all away. For a chance to be a winner, pick up your free red and white WMAQ bumper sticker from any participant true value hardware store in the greater Chicago area and stick it on your car's rear bumper. If the Q-Truck stops you, you win. It's that easy. Stick it and win with WMAQ. Hello again, everybody. Harry Carey and Jimmy Pearsall. We're going now to the top of the fourth. The White Sox are leading three to nothing and leading it off here bump wills who rolled into a double play his first time at bat 
Wills hitting 219 with five homers. Ron Schuler into the wind of the pitch. Curveball a little bit low outside. You know, of all the Hall of Famers, there are only two guys who are either managing or coaching in the major leagues. Here's a fastball outside. And the two are Bob Lemon, manager of the White Sox, and Yogi Berra, coach of the Yankees. Two balls, no strikes. The delivery. Good fastball at the knee, and Schuler looks sharp. Well, he sure does. He's throwing well. Good motion on his breaking balls and throwing a lot of strikes. Two balls and a strike. Here's the pitch swung on. High fly ball, easy out. Coming in for an Allen Bannister waiting. Makes the catch, one away. Wills flies out to Bannister. And that will bring up Bobby Bonds. We're in the top of the fourth. the delivery. Curveball outside. And that evens it up with a ball and a strike. One away, top of the fourth. Now the delivery, here it is. Curve! Strike two right in there. And he's ahead of him, two strikes and a ball. Bobby Bonds with seven homers, 19 RBI. Now the signal given to wind up. Here's the pitch strike. guy, I'd have gotten twice as much money as either of the other two, because he is a far better ball player. Al Oliver, a better hitter, a better fielder, and a just as good a runner. Better runner than one, and uh, just as good as the other one. First pitch in there is strike off. One strike and nothing, two men are out. Delivery by Schuler is a fastball low and away. And the count evens up with a ball and a strike. Two men are out. Ball game is in the top of the fourth inning. Here's the pitch. Chow! And he does strike two. Two strikes and a ball. Out of sign. The pitch. Bouncing ball. It's foul. Boy, I want to tell you something, Joe. I've never heard himself on that swing. Looked like he pulled a rib cage. Yeah, he's flexing at the knees. You know, Joe Kelman, the well-known philanthropist, civic leader here in Chicago, also has had some great horses like Shecky Green. Named a horse after me, Jimmy. And that horse ran his first race yesterday at Churchill Downs, and he won. His name is Harry Carey. So Joe Kelman called me to tell me about that today. You know, you have to give permission to use your name. And I, uh, I said, why didn't you let me know so I could have bet on him? You need a bet on him. Well, he says, you know, he says, I don't encourage any gambling, he says. Well, I just want you to know, he said, I'm going to send you a picture. I want to see that on. He'll be eligible for the Derby next year. No kidding? Then we'll bet on him. <laughs> It looked like he's hurt his ribcage pretty bad, and that's a tough break for him because they lost Beniquis with a broken hand last night. Now Oliver playing center field has come up with some kind of a rib injury or something that he's holding his left side as he goes out of the ball game. We're going to have a pinch hitter for him. Bobby Thompson. Bobby Thompson, who they use as a pinch runner most of the time, is going to inherit a two-strike and a ball count. I want to tell you, though, Bobby Thompson is one of the best-looking center fielders I've seen in a long time. He was in the Texas organization in the minor league system, 
And if he had any problem at all, it was the problem of getting along with managers in the minor league. He led the league in getting managers mad at him. His own manager, that is. But he's got all the tools in the world, and now to replace Oliver in center field, he won't hurt him. He patterned his career after you. No, I had no trouble with managers. Now, I want to straighten that out. I never had trouble with managers I played with. Chase Front office Sanko people. Oh, he, he never had any trouble with me because he didn't know my name. <laughs> <laughs> he used to give me that hey you shot. He used to say <laughs> that fella. <laughs> that fella, that yeah. Fella. <laughs> hey you. <laughs> Two strikes on the ball. Bobby Thompson. A North Carolina boy. Lives in Charlotte. Consolidate your bills and make one monthly payment that may be less than the total you're paying now. Talk to HFC about a bill payer loan. Household Finance, an equal opportunity lender. most expensive ingredients, the best techniques, etc. Who cares? Me, I go by the taste alone. If it tastes good, that's my beer, and I'll bet you're that way too. And so you have to admit that Stroh's beer tastes good. Maybe it is the unique fire brewing that does it. All I know, if you're a real beer lover, you'll love Stroh. How do I know? Well, because I'm a real beer lover, and I love Stroh. So I drink Strohs. To your health, pal, with Strohs. Just said that strikeout was charged to Oliver. Yeah, that's what I, uh, I hazarded the guests. I had the intercom fixed for you, Harry. Bill Naharadne, the batter. The count, two strikes or nothing. Here's John Matlack. Fastball outside. Boy, Seattle has really given New York a fit tonight. They've come up with another run. They now lead 7-2. The Yankees hitting in the bottom of the fifth inning. Now the wind-up, the delivery. Here it is. Hey! Struck him out. Swinging. One out. That'll bring up George Orta. He fanned his first time up. One man gone. The boys are here from Sportsman's Corner in Whiting, Indiana. Those great Sox fans, McLansky, Harmon, Velasco, and tonight, Rottermacher. That fourth name is always different, but those first three guys are always here. Here's the wind of the pitch to Orta. Swung on, bouncing ball. First baseman's got it. Flips for the out. Orta rolls out from Hargrove to Matlack. Here now is Kessinger. He flied out to left his first time at bat. Richie Zisk will be leading it off. Good to see an old fifth. favorite friend of mine, Mickey Stanley, at home run. Tonight, Kansas City. They lead that ball game 4-1, to Kansas City over Detroit. Detroit batting in the fifth. Two men are gone. Kessinger, the batter, the pitch on the way, swung and he fouled it. Hey, you youngsters, the Major League Scouting Bureau representing 17 different teams with well-known scouts like Benny Zentera, Nick Kamzik, and Chuck Coney are going to hold some tryout camps here next week. There's a strike call. 
Saturday and Sunday, June 24th and 25th at McKinley Park on West Pershing Road in Chicago. Monday, June the 26th in Winnetka. That's a Child's Field, 385 Winnetka Avenue at the Eden's Expressway exit on Willow Road East. And on Tuesday, the 27th at Marinelli Field, Blackhawk Black Park, Rockford, Illinois. Those camps begin at 9 o'clock in the morning on each of those days. Just bring your own uniforms and a glove and a bat or shoes or whatever and have these great scouts take a look at you. Who knows what might happen? Here's a pitch swung on. Foul out of play. That's Saturday and Sunday, June 24th and 25th at McKinley Park on West Pershing Road in Chicago. The 26th on Monday at Winnetka, Illinois, and on Tuesday the 27th at Blackhawk Park in Rockford. Here's the pitch on the way. Outside ball two. California just came up with two runs in the seventh. Baltimore leads that ball game five to two. And they're batting in the bottom of the seventh. Baltimore going for the 13th in a row. Here's a pitch outside and high. Hey, and a Baltimore wins and the Yankees lose. Baltimore goes ahead of the Yankees. Now the windup. Here's the pitch on the way. Ground ball to the shortstop. Campanaris has it over the first to retire the side. Matlack has settled down. One, two, three. Nothing can cross at the end of four. White Sox three. Texas nothing. You know, the best place to shop for a Father's Day gift for Dad is where he shops for himself at a nearby True Value hardware store. Now, if Dad's been taking it on the chin with an old shaver, this Father's Day, give him a Remington electric razor like the rechargeable XL RF 3000. Features a twin row of 60 sharp cutting blades for a close, comfortable shave, plus an intercept cutter to shave off long, stray whiskers, and a professional wick trimmer that makes it easy to keep sideburns, mustache, or beard neatly trimmed. True Value hardware store Stores also offer the Remington Radio Rechargeable Shaver with adjustable control for comfort and closeness, plus a professional with hideaway pop-up trimmer. This Father's Day, give Dad a Remington Electric Shaver from participating True Value Hardware Stores. And get your free WMAQ's Gonna Make Me Rich bumper sticker. You could win a $25 gift certificate, a car, or even $1,000 in cash. Get your bumper sticker at participating True Value Hardware Stores. Remember, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Hi, everybody. I'm Jimmy Pearsall for Emory Air Freight. With some air freight companies, your package has to go out of its way to get where it's going. That's like running the bases backwards. Harry Carey and Jimmy Pearsall, as we go now into the top of the fifth inning, and here's Richie Ziss to lead it off. said before, nobody ever earned a booing better than Ziss. I don't doubt that he expected a standing ovation. Well, <laughs> he probably did. I could never see how he could have Bill Veck about anything. Bill made it possible for him to get that money. Took him out of Pittsburgh. He couldn't sign it because he couldn't afford nobody it. I never knew he was in Pittsburgh. He came here and he, he owned the town. He's the one who decided to leave for a bundle of money. And he wished him well, Mr. Veck. You would Beck. think he would rap anybody. Here's the foot swung and fouled off. Two strikes and a ball. Nobody on and nobody out. Richie Zisk at the plate. I'll say one thing. He's in great shape. He's lost a lot of weight, 30 pounds, and he looks like a ball player for a change. Two strikes and a ball. Here's the pitch. Outside a curveball. Schuler had good luck if, with him last year. If Schuler can get, him, get that curveball over, he'll get him out. Richie Ziss digging in. Outfield plays him deep. Two balls, two strikes, the pitch. Hey, he struck him out. Hey, and the crowd loves it. What a way. Every time he came in to relieve against us last year when he's with Minnesota, he just kept throwing that sidearm breaking stuff to him. I think he told me on the uh, on the TV dugout show last night, Schuler did, that he had retired Shu uh, uh, Z Z Ziss something like 0 for 23. 
Here's Mike Hargrove, a tough-hitting first baseman. The pitch. Hervin there, a strike call. Well, Ron Schumer has a no-hitter. Boy, his secret to his success tonight is throwing strikes in a hurry and getting out in front. Now the windup. Here's the pitch on the way. Outside. Stewart, Sam, Laura, Scott, Pam, George, and Julie are here tonight. And so is the Ozone's softball team from South Bend. Here's a pitch swung on, fly ball, right field, going to be caught. Nord Hagen has it. Hargrove flies to Nord Hagen. I'll tell you how good his motion is on his breaking ball. He jammed Hargrove with a curve. He hit it right on the fist. Two men are gone. Here now is Johnny Lowenstein, a left-handed hitter. The National Paraplegia Foundation will hold a benefit at the Faces Club on Rush Street, Monday night, June the 26th. Now the pitch, here it is, outside. My good friend Art Desmond interested in that. National Paraplegia Foundation. There's a fastball wide. There are about 175,000 Americans who are paralyzed from spinal cord injury. And about 7,000 are added to their role each year. Here's a long drive, right field. Going back, Nard Hagen waiting. He's got it. One, two, three, nothing across. A no-hitter for five innings by Schuler. We go to the bottom of the fifth. The White Sox three, Texas nothing. We go now into the bottom of the fifth. The White Sox leading three to nothing. Boy, another run or two. But just about clinch this one. Schuler has a no-hitter going. And last night, young Gale, pitcher for Kansas City, gave him one hit. So the Rangers have been having their trouble getting base hits. Jim Perman, my good friend. Dakota people sends up a note. He says, and Harry, instead of a get over 500 homestand, which is great, why don't you say a get in the first place homestand? Sounds a lot better. I'll buy that. And where the heck is a Stroh's vendor, he writes. <laughs> where are they tonight? also says, don't let the Tribune know that we're playing at home. There's <laughs> <laughs> Pryor to lead it off. And the pitch swung on. Diving stop by Toby Hara. Throws the first for the out. Nice play. One away, that refers to the little thing that's been stirred. The Tribune ran a story. Bill Beck told Bill Jows last night. He said, if it wasn't for the great White Sox fans, because of the unfair publicity given to one team over the other, I would leave. The way it came out in the paper was that he was thinking of moving the ball club, which wasn't what he said at all. And the other thing he said, he said, the media in Chicago has been great with the exception of one paper, the Tribune, which happened to be the paper that Jouse works for. That didn't come out that way either when the story came out. They didn't say anything about that. They just encompassed all the media together and never made the distinction of the only one he complained about, which was the Tribune. And Tribune, for a million name uh, uh, writers, they tell me Tally was at it while we're on the road. You know Tally. Tally, like an alley. the middle and scored on Bannister's triple in the third inning and he can be awfully tough if you get that ball inside a left-hander. He stands right on top of the plate with that right foot. Two strikes and nothing. One man out. A little tap down the first baseline. Gar is hustling with his foul. Not a way to run you, Ralphie. Is he hustling? Boy, he is really hustling. Two strikes and nothing. He's hustling like a little bat boy. I've never seen a little bat boy go small. 
Mike looks like his mother took a, uh, when I was an altar boy, we used to have the cassette tape. That's what he's wearing. He reminds me of an old Danny Thomas story. <laughs> Sam, you made the pants too long. <laughs> <laughs> he's out of that dugout in the hurry, though. He relays the bat to the right. Two strikes. Ralph Gar waiting. We're in the bottom of the fifth, three to nothing, White Sox. Fouled it back, had a good cut. Boston nine, Oakland nothing in the ninth inning. Kansas City leading Detroit, four to one in the sixth. Now the pitch. Hey, struck him out. Gar goes down swinging. That's four strikeouts for Matt Lack. He's allowed four hits and three runs. Here's Alan Bannister. Bottom of the fifth. Bannis is having a pretty good night. He's got a triple. He scored a run in the first uh, force play, and he's got an RBI. So he's been involved in all in three of the runs. And he had a stolen base. Yeah. Here's a curve in there, a strike called. One strike and nothing. Seattle seven, the Yankees three and a six. Now the pitch. He didn't mean to swing a little dribbler. He may get a hit out of it. The throw. Save. Bannister on a check swing. Hit a little dribbler down the third baseline. I didn't think it'd even be a play for Sundberg with a tremendous arm. Made a play out of it and almost got it. He certainly did. And he came out there like a cat. As soon as that ball touched the bat, he knows it's going to be trouble for the pitcher. There was no chance for Medlock to get him. But a fine play and real hustle by Bannister, who didn't watch the ball. He just kept running. Allen's two out of three now. Here's Chet Lemon. Crouching the plate. Now the signal given. Into the stretch. The pitch. Curveball inside. Almost hit a ball one. In the first inning, he got picked off. And then with this, when he's going to second, Hardgrove hit him with the ball. It was an error on Hardgrove. So they're a little leery of him. Bannister can really run those bases. One ball, no strikes. Now the pitch on the way. Oh, he had a weak swing. And he missed. Had a ball and a strike. I guess when you become a veteran now like Medlack is, he's gone from all that good stuff now to finesse with his breaking ball in good motion. One ball, one strike. Same two teams tomorrow night. Then Kansas City will be here Friday night. Day game Saturday will be out in the bleachers and a doubleheader Sunday. One one pitch. Low inside. Ball two. Boy, everybody tries to pitch Lemon inside because they jam him. And he doesn't get his bat out there. They try to pitch Lemon, Johnson, and Soderholm right in there. They're chanting, we want beer. Where's that Strohs man? Harry's having all excitement here. He's trying to get the uh, beer man. Now to stretch the pitch on the way. Stride call over the inside corner. I don't see how he can ever hit that ball, Jimmy, the way he is. He's all tied up at that plate. If he does hit it, he's got to hit it out in front. He can't let it get in on him. He's got to go out after it before it gets to him. Then he's going to pull it he foul. Would, he would hit so much better if he's back in that batter's box. Two balls, two strikes. Here's a throw to first, the runner back. He's always hit that way. I've never seen him since I've been here in any other way. Three to nothing in favor of the White Sox. Here's the pitch. He held up in time. All three. The run will be going now in three and two. Boy, Torborg is having this problem. Minnesota come up with three more. They lead eight to one in the fourth inning. Three balls, two strikes. Now the signal given. Chet Lemon waiting. Banners to be going on the pitch. Here's the delivery. There goes the runner. Stroud came oh. out. A fastball over the inside corner. 
runs, one hit. There's one left. At the end of five, White Sox three, Texas nothing. Nelson working the puck behind the net. Dumps it out in front of Boteers. Fires, scores! Hi, this is Kurt Gowdy for your Clark List truck dealer. Did you know that the first hockey stick were tree roots and the first puck was a knot of wood? It's true. Of course, the sport has evolved greatly since then. Today, curved sticks slap frozen rubber pucks at speeds more than 100 miles per hour, requiring quick reactions from the players. A delayed decision can cost a game. In the material handling game, you can also lose with a delayed decision. If your lift trucks are worn out, but you're putting off replacing them, ask your Clark dealer about his rental plan. He'll put a new model lift truck to work for you without a dime's worth of capital investment. Don't delay your decision to replace your lift trucks. Talk rental with your clock dealer soon and tell him Gowdy sent you. Talk lift truck rental with rental specialists. That's Clark Lift of Chicago, the lift truck people, where service is the name of the game. Harry Carey back in the ballpark. We're going into the top of the sixth. Ron Schuler with a three to nothing lead. He hasn't allowed a hit as yet. Here's the one guy who hit the ball hard against him, though. Jim Sundberg, the pride of Galesburg, Illinois, who lined hard to Gar his first time at bat. You know, they play him kind of different than most of them. They play him on the line and left and on the line and right. And Bannister now is playing him straight away. Exciting Chicago White Sox baseball coming your way through. WMAQ NBC Chicago, the station that's going to make you rich. Curve strike call. One strike and nothing. A good crowd, but half of what it would have been with any kind of weather. We have cold and rainy weather today. Here's the pitch. Ground ball to the shortstop. Kessinger's got it over the first in time. You know what security is. A ground ball to Kessinger. That's what security is. That's the third bat he's broken in this ballgame. Hit him right on the fist and Sunberg broke his bat. And getting ahead of the hitters I keep being repetitious about has been a big factor in Schuler's success so far tonight. He's getting him to hit his pitch. One man out, nobody on. Bart Cap Benares, who likes to butt. He'll push that butt too. Cap Benares, 37 years old. Now the wind up the pitch on the way, here it is. Fastball a little bit inside, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Kansas City leading over Detroit. Four to one in the sixth. Atlanta murdering St. Louis. There's a curve wide. Two balls, no strikes. Only one man is, only two men have reached base, both on airs. Now the wind up the delivery. A little bit inside. Three balls, no strikes. Now the pitch. Good strike on the outside corner to knee. Three balls and a strike on the veteran shortstop of the Texas Rangers, Bert Campanaris. White Sox are leading three to nothing. Here's the wind up the pitch. Ball four. He walked him. That's the first man he's walked. Now that brings the top of the batting order up there with one away. Here's Toby Hara. He's nothing out of two. The Rensselaer High School baseball team here tonight. Schuler made a great play on Hera in the third when he half swing a high hopper over towards the line and threw it off balance. Perfect strike for an out. One of the better plays you'll see by a pitcher. Here's the pitch. Good curveball in there, a strike call. One strike or nothing. Schuler with a good sidearm curveball. And sometimes he comes right over the top with it, too. Usually to left-hand hitters. Now the side. Baltimore going for their 13th victory in a row. Here's the stretch, the pitch. Fastball a little bit low. That evens it up for the ball and the strike. Seattle seven. Yankees three. The game is in the sixth. Schuler with excellent control. Through that sinker down and low, trying to get him to chase it for a ground ball double play. There's a throw over to first, the runner back. One ball, one strike. 
Here's the pitch on the way. Swings and he fouls. Oh, 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 don't be hurt. Get him out of the Rodney. Oh, he's hurt. The right knee. He is twisting in pain, squirming. That ball hit him on the knee or on the thigh. Oh, that hurt. And he's lying on his back. I imagine Bill Beck's on the telephone right now to Iowa. Getting hold of Mike Colburn. Now Rodney, who's a bull, though, he's got to have a leg broken before he get out of there. Remember Kansas City, he got hit in the shoulder. He went down for the count, and Barrios says, get up, we're in a hurry, I want to pitch. Yeah. <laughs> you could be hurt tomorrow. He's all right. Two strikes on the ball. Runner at first base, one out. Seattle now leads the Yankees seven to four. Hey, you've been a good catcher, you know why? You could catch everything everywhere. I want to tell you, with that red outfit you got on tonight, that ball would never miss you. Oh, I've caught a few things in my life. <laughs> I won't touch that. Two strikes on the ball. There goes the runner. Line drive base hit. First one of the ball game against Schumer and his runners at first and third. Toby Harrell with a count of two strikes on the ball. Line to single the left. Here's Bump Wills now with only one out. He's got a breaking ball up in his eyes and rips it. Toronto beat Milwaukee, it looks like. No, they lost to Milwaukee 7-5 in the first game. Bump Wills has home run power. Atlanta leads the Cardinals 7-1. to Hey, we have 61 double plays. A lot to do with our success. I'd like to see another one right here. The opposition has 49 against us. Now to stretch the pitch. Good curve, overhanded curve to the left-hand hitter. Strike call. Wilbur Wood warming up in the bullpen. Along with Willoughby. Well, uh, Rich Hinton wins six of the third innings yet. Last night, he could hardly be used again. Here's a pitch swing on ground ball. Lamar Johnson, out at second, return throw. Out at third. Double play. The inning is over. Holy cow. That ball was hit like a bullet. And Lamar made the 3-6-3 three, three double play perfectly. The crowd giving the White Sox a standing ovation. We go into the bottom of the sixth. White Sox three, Texas nothing. Chevy dealer today during tough truck trading days. And remember, he needs used trucks now. Boy, you feel proud when you got a truck. You know it's really built to stay tough. It's riding high feeling all the way in a big tough truck. From Chevrolet. Harry Carey out here at Comiskey Park. Next time you're here, notice how many people in on Stroh's beer, like they are right down here below our booth right now, even to the point of going up to the stands to a Stroh's draft station where the Stroh's vendor is not available. Now, that's the greatest compliment to the way Stroh's beer has taken over Chicago in such a short time. A brewmaster could probably tell you why Stroh's beer tastes so good. Me, all I know is a real beer drinker, I enjoy it. So I ask for it. You insist on it too. Stroh's beer made for the real beer drinker. I'm one. How about you? Stroh's. Ah, salute. Here we go, bottom of the six. Nord Hagen leading it off. Three to nothing in favor of the White Sox. A sparkling double play ended at the top of the six. Nord Hagen complaining about something in the center field bleachers that is bothering his view or something. Now the umpire is looking at it. But I think it's a white piece of uh, hot 
dog wrapper, but it's very white. It could be right in his line of vision. With uh, Matlock coming over the top. There's a strike boy. I don't think the umpire can see it either. I don't either. That ball's a foot outside. <laughs> boy, he's a pitcher's umpire, I'll tell you that. A ball and a strike. Here's the pitch on the way. Brown ball to the shortstop. Tampa Harris charges it. Throws the first to the out. We're not exactly wearing out Matlack either. You know, Wills is hitting the two double plays tonight. He's having a tough year. And he hit the ball sharply each time. Yeah. But the only way you double him up, boy, that smash at Lamar Johnson yeah. happened to be right at him. And he threw perfectly to Kessinger. And once Kessinger gets the ball, you know he's going to do what comes naturally. You know who can get down the line to break up a double play and hustle is Bannister. He did it in the first inning and then scored a run. Pure hustle. One out. Here's Lamar Johnson. Matt Lack's pitch. Here it is. Strong. And he had a good cut. But he fouled it back. Boston defeated Oakland tonight. Nine to nothing. I think the party's over. Home runs by Yastrzemski and Wright. Tiak gets the win. He's 6-0. Groberg. He got the loss. He's 6-6. Six 6. 29,690 at Boston. Kansas City will be in a virtual tie. Here's the pitch. Strike call oh, the boy. The White Sox would move to within two and a half games of first place. They're three under the 500 mark. Two strikes and nothing. Here's the pitch. Swings and he fouls it back. I think our good friend Jim Kerman watching the game down here right below us. Uh, I think he's got a point. Instead of get over the 500 homestand, get in the first place homestand. That's positive thinking. Two strikes to nothing. There's a smash base hit. An off the pitch. Lamar Johnson singles the center. Here's the Harutney. Well, I'll tell you, when Lamar hits that ball and a good part of that, it just jumps up that middle. Campanaris, he was almost there, but he couldn't make a move for it. It went right by him. Is that good friend Brad Carbett, the owner of these multi-millionaires here tonight? <laughs> told you with the secret. He'd be here with 100 people, didn't he? He said he's going to have a group of 100 here. I don't see him, though. Well, he wouldn't be sitting there. They're probably sitting somewhere up in the stands. There's a runner at first. Now, Harodney, the bottom of the pitch. Curve into the dirt. Good save by Jim Sundberg. What do you mean for me? I want to diet. One ball, no strikes. Activity in the bullpen, Wilbur Wood. Now the pitch. High pop fly, short right field, going to be caught. Bobby Bonds is there and he has it. Two away. That brings up George Orta. We just can't break through John Matlack, who's had a great earn run average. Although his, he's only won five, lost six. But his earned run average has been brilliant. 2.72. Mario's just loosening up in the bullpen for the White Sox. Steve Stone tomorrow night. Two men are on. Here's the pitch to Orta. Good fastball. Matt Lack came right over the top on that one. You know, he got a pretty poor, does he? He really does. Now the stretch, the pitch, curve a little bit outside. I don't know why more pitchers don't pitch right over the top, Jimmy. It used to be common. Now it's unusual. Some people just can't do it. They, they want to do it, but it's, they don't have the facilities to do it with. Atlanta beat the Cardinals again, 7-1. to one. There's a long drive. Deep left center field going to be caught. Richie's is because there and he has it. No runs, one hit. No errors, one left. This is Harry Carey going back over to television. The score here at the end of six, the White Sox three, 
Texas nothing. Whether you're planning to patch a small hole or paint a large wall, True Value Hardware Stores can help. They offer supplies you need to get professional-looking results at a fraction of professional cost. For painting jobs, you'll find a wide selection of rollers, brushes, painting pad kits, and more. And you'll find an assortment of tuck masking tape in a variety of widths to help you protect woodwork while you paint the walls and help protect walls and windows as you paint the trim. For patching jobs, True Value Hardware Stores offer Bondex Concrete Resurfacer, a new dry latex formula for use on stone or brick. From start to finish, find the patching and painting supplies you need for better looking results and participate in True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. And get your free WMAQ Gonna Make Me Rich bumper sticker. You could win a $25 gift certificate, a car, or even $1,000 in cash. Get your bumper sticker at participating True Value Hardware Stores. Remember, no purchase necessary and void where prohibited. Jimmy Pierce off Emory Air Freight. One thing I like about Emory is they even stay up after curfew. Everybody, Lauren Brown back in Comiskey Park. As we go to the seventh inning, the White Sox out in front here by a score of three to nothing. Ron Schuler has done a tremendous job. He's allowed only one hit and a no-hitter going for five and a third innings when Harris singled with one out. They had runners at first and third, but he got Buck Wells to ground out into the second double play of the night, turned over by the White Sox. And the second off the bat of Wills. Bobby Bonds leads it off here in the inning. Bobby takes the first pitch for a ball. He has struck out twice tonight. Schuler has struck out four. Bonds twice and Zisk once. Here's a pitch, a swing and a grounder. The left. Kessinger to his left has it. Throws. He got him. Bonds showing good speed getting down the line. He was out by an eyelash. And there's one out. And the batter is Bobby Thompson. Pinch hit for Al Oliver, who took a foul ball off his foot or his shin, we know not, in the fourth inning on a 1-1 count. So Thompson came into the ball game with a 1-2 count on him and took the first pitch and wound up striking out. Schuler into the windup and the pitch to Thompson. Swing and a miss. Pryor playing in a third. The outfield playing shallow and left with Gar in left, Bannister in left center. Nordhagen deep and straight away in right for the left-handed hitter. Here's the pitch. Called strike two. He has taken nothing but three strikes from Schuler. The first one, which was strike three when he was up on the play we told you about, and now taking two more. Schuler into the windup. Here's the two-strike delivery, and it's way outside of all. Richie Zisk in the on-deck circle. Schuler has been tough against Texas. He's allowed only one run in 12 innings against them. Here's a pitch swing and a foul. Just got a piece of it. The Rangers last night were shut out in one hit by Rich Gale. That was a triple by Al Oliver, one of the premier outfielders in the major leagues in the eighth inning. Boston knocked off Oakland nine to nothing, a four hitter by Louis Tion. Right-hander ready, here's the one-two pitch. Swing and a miss, he struck him out strikeout for Schuler and the batter is Richie Ziss. He is slide out to left and he is struck out and he has committed an error. And the fans fool him again. You know, the Chicago fans I do not believe are that hard on Ziss because he signed the big contract. I think the problem stems from the fact of two things. One, in spring training, he said that he carried the White Sox all of last year, which his teammates are not that crazy about that statement. I think he forgot there was a fellow by the name of Gamble, Soderholm, and Bannister on this club, and Lamar Johnson and Jim Spencer. Lemon didn't do bad either. And Chet Lemon, that's right. And he also made the statement on CBS radio, here's a strike with a breaking ball, one and one, that he didn't play the last month of the season because the team was out of the race. Oh. Well, that's he also, why he picked up weight. He also got on Bill Vick. Here's the one-one pitch, swing and a miss. He got on Mr. Vick. And Mr. Beck made it possible. He took him from Pittsburgh and made a, in a town where they made a star out of him. I don't think I've ever seen a free agent treated any better in the last two years of the free agency than this was. Here's the one-two delivery. Swing it away! He struck him out again! Just it out! There's your standing ovation, Bush! Standing ovation! Standing ovation! You like the field! There you go! For the second time! I love you! So, the 
Moxley, he knows he needs you. Let's go to Harry Carey. Realtors with nine offices serving all of the Page County and the Fox River Valley. And in the western and northwestern suburbs, it's Gladstone Realtors. In El Grove Village, call 439-1100. We're part of Reno. So you should let your house with us. Hey, Reno, Reno, Reno. Mark Brown and Jimmy Pearsall back at Chavisky Park. As Rob Schuler just struck out Richie Zest for the second consecutive time tonight. The White Sox go to the bottom of the seventh, leading here three to nothing. It will be Kessinger, Pryor, and Gar to face Matlock. And the first pitch to Kessinger, cut on and foul back to the screen. Boy, these fans give me the shivers. I want to tell you, but I love to play for these people. They make you welcome it at home, boy. All you got to do is make it happen. Woo! John Matlock into the windup. Here's the pitch. And it's low a ball. This could conceivably be a one-run ball game. Right, you know, the music they play in Texas, they put you to sleep. This music wakes you up. Left-hander ready, the 1-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Kansas City leading Detroit 5-1. to Baltimore won their 13th in a row. They handed California their third straight loss, 5-2. to And Boston has beaten Oakland 9 to nothing. So the White Sox tonight can gain if they held up in this, vic in this uh, lead and gain a victory. They can gain on Oakland. They can gain on California and on Texas. And they're at the end of six at Kansas City with the Royals winning 5-1. to one. Here's the pitch. Swing of the grounder to third. Toby Hara has it. Throws. He got him. So Kessinger grounds out from third to first. And there's one out. That Baltimore, California game, Palmer got the win. He's nine and four. The losing pitcher was Brett, and Baltimore won it five to two for their thirteenth win in a row. Thirteen in a row, and Palmer now has won one, two, three, four, five, six. He lost one three in a row, lost four in a row. Now he has won six in a row. One game he did not get a decision, and the pitch to Pryor is a strike. He is something. Brett, the loser, two and four. Here's the pitch inside a ball. Bad break for Texas, losing Oliver and Boniquas, both fine outfielders and good hitters, has got to slow this ball club down. Unless Thompson can pick up the slack in center field, and he's a rookie. Well, they don't know how long Oliver will be out. It may just be a game. Here's the 1-1 pitch foul back to the screen. Did he get it off his foot or his shin, Jimmy? I couldn't tell. Which was that? Al Oliver. I thought it was his rib cage. Oh, is that where? Well, we yeah. couldn't see it on the replay like he, on television. It looked like when he swung at the ball, he hurt something in his rib cage. I don't know. It looked that way to me. On the swing, because he went down too fast for it to be his foot. Here's the one-two pitch. Swing and a grounder up the middle. Campanaris to his left. Nice play. How's it throws? He just got him. Good play by Campanaris, who, what is he, 35 years old? 36. Going 36 37. Could move it. And I want to tell you, you notice, though, it isn't the Campaneris that I used to see. He just barely gets to those balls now before he was right there. But, you know, he still can get the job done. Well, you're 36, and you don't do things like you used to. No. Give me the money right now. Right now. That's the best compliment you've had all season. <laughs> I want to win this game. Let's win it. All right, Ralph Gar, the batter. He's been on twice tonight, officially one for two with a single. 
He has walked, he has singled, and scored, and he has struck out against Matt Lack. Mm. Swings and fouls went upstairs. Popcorn goes flying, beer goes flying, but a fan gets the ball. Scar having good swings tonight at this left-hander. One strike in the batter. Gar getting on his first two times resulted in two runs for the White Sox. He was forced out by Bannister, but Bannister was on. Here's the pitch high and inside of all. Allen went, made it to second on an air by Hargrove and came home on Lemon single. And then Allen tripled home Gar after he singled the second time. Left-hander ready. Here's the 1-1 pitch. And it's low a ball. Two balls and a strike. Seattle still out in front of the Yankees, seven to four at the end of six. The Mariners trying to snap a six-game losing streak. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a base hit into right center field. Bonds coming over, has it on a couple of hops. Gar's going to try for second. Here's a pull. He is safe. A double. Nice play, round. Boy, the hustle, baby. Bonds hesitated for a minute and couldn't get a good hole on the ball, but Gar, with two outs and smart base running, hustles in the second. Gets himself in one scoring position as the millionaires are not playing too well. Alan Bannister, the batter, he's been on three times a fielder's choice, a triple, and an infield hit. He is officially two for three. He has scored two runs, and he has driven in a run. Henry Cruz loosening up down the left field side. He'll be coming in to play center field in the eighth. A base hit here could make it a 4-0 ball game as the Sox lead 3-0. Matt Lack working out of the stretch. Here's the pitch. High and outside a ball. White Sox with a run in the first, two in the third. Texas has been shut out for seven innings. They have not scored a run in their last 17 innings. And they've had only two hits in their last 16. Here's the pitch. Here's a hey. swing and a base hit to center field. Here comes Gar around third. Taps and boots the ball. Bannis is trying for two. Here's the throw. He's safe. It's a four to the ball game. A single in an air. the Texas dugout pacing back and forth the air by Thompson allowed Bannister to go into scoring position Allen has driven in two runs tonight he had only two all year and Chet Levin who has driven in two runs tonight's the batter he hit a curveball inside to right center inside out he's a good hitter and a good clutch player left-hander ready here's the pitch to Chet Levin Ooh. there's a swing and a foul had a good cut Ooh. White Sox trying to win their fourth in a row, their ninth in their last 10, and their 16th in their last 18. Come on, Chet. Feet tough, young man. One strike on the batter. Matt Black out of the stretch. Former Met delivers. Inside on the corner of strike. He's been rung up on those pitches, Jimmy. He's really hugging that plate, and he's not getting the inside pitch. Well, it's hard for me to really tell because we're so high. And the umpire is a tall umpire, so you can't see the ball in there, whether the catcher moves his glove or not. But he certainly better be looking for it in there because they're calling it and he's throwing it in there. Yeah, he struck him out with it his last time up. Shut two for three with two singles and two RBIs tonight. Matlack in front of him, two strikes. Look for a breaking ball here. Here's the pitch. Pass ball inside. He came back with it. Oh, he's going to keep it in there. If he throws him a breaking ball, he's going to throw it down and in. Four to nothing. The White Sox out in front. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Matt Black ready. A one-two pitch. Ooh. Swing and a miss. He struck him out and a foul tip into the catcher's mitt. And that retires the side. But the White Sox come up with a run on two hits. One air, one man left on. We're at the end of seven at Comiskey Park. The White Sox, four runs on eight hits. Texas, no runs on one hit. The time is right, that coming through. Only one day will Another show. This 
Astro Brewery Company, Detroit, Michigan. WMHU, with cash and prizes and the great cure. All you need is your telephone and you could win. Call when we say call, and if you're the right caller, you'll win. The great cure, with great cash and great prizes for you. From your radio station, WMAQ. Lord Brown back at Comiskey Park as we go to the eighth inning. The White Sox out in front, four to nothing, and a one-hitter by Ron Schuler. Mike Hargrove will lead it off for Texas. He'll be followed by John Lowenstein and Jim Sundberg. Six, seven, and eight hitters for the Rangers. Right-hander delivers. Here's the pitch. Low ball. Right-hander ready. The 1-0 pitch. Swing of the grounder. Foul to the right side. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch, and it's low a ball. If the White Sox can hang on and win, and they lead it 4 to nothing in the eighth, here's the 2-1 delivery. Swing and a foul back to the screen, 2-2. Two two. Kansas City is winning right now, 5-1 to one at the end of seven. Oakland and California have already lost. If... Kansas City should hang on and win that ball game, and if the White Sox should win tonight, Kansas City would move into first place by one percentage point over Oakland in a virtual tie for first place. Texas would be a half a game back. Here's the pitch. Swing it a miss. He struck him out. Three strikeouts in a row. For sure, that's the second time he's done that tonight, and he has a total of seven to his credit. Texas would be a half a game out, California a game and a half out, and the White Sox only two and a half out. Meaning, only two and a half games would separate the top five clubs in the division. And the batter's Lowenstein. He is grounded out to first and flight out to right. Here's a swing and a fly ball, deep left center field. Going back is Cruz. He slipped and fell. And the ball drops beyond him. Here goes the runner headed for third. Here's the throw coming into the infield. They're going to wave him on. Here's the throw to the plate. He is safe. It'll be an inside the park home run as Cruz slipped and fell when he got near the warning track. He came in defensively for Bannister. And the ball got beyond him. Nordhagen out there to see how he is. And it's a four to one ball game. Cruz looked like he was ready to catch it. And he slipped and fell out there. Now Charlie Sad, the trainer, is going to come out as Gar is over there with him. Hope he didn't strain a leg muscle or anything. All of a sudden, his feet went right out from under him. And you know, Cruz has been playing an exceptional center field for the White Sox. He says he's all right. But it goes as an inside-the-park home run. And it's a four-to-one ball game. So one out and a run in. Sunberg, the batter, he is lined out to left and he is grounded out to short. Here's the pitch. Swing and a base hit to left field. That's the third hit off the Schuler. Willoughby throwing in the bullpen. And the batter will be Burt Campanaris, who has gotten out in an air, and he has walked. Kessinger comes in to talk to Schuler. Boy, that's a shame. Looked like he was going to get that ball, and all of a sudden his feet went right out from under him. I don't know if he got tangled up or what surface out there. It had been raining before the ball game, and i got to believe with the water out at the edge of the warning track. Now here comes Bob Lemon. 
He might go with Willoughby. He's been up for a couple of innings. Uh, just too bad on that ball that Cruz could not handle. Well, it wasn't the wet turf, and he went down. And Lowenstein came all the way around. That's going to be all for Schuler. Ron did a whale of a job. He went seven and a third innings. Allowing only one run on three hits, walked a man, and struck out seven. And he'll get a big hand here from this crowd. They're on their feet. A standing ovation for Ron Schuler as he goes to the dugout. And Jim Willoughby comes in. And we'll be back in just a minute. Let's swing into spring. Your participating Chicago area shell dealer is offering two reserved White Sox tickets free when you purchase an oil change, oil filter, air filter, and lubrication. You'll score every time with free Sox tickets plus quality products and great service. Yes, the Sox are back, so join your local shell dealer and cheer them on. But hurry, this offer expires June 16, 1978, and is good only while ticket supplies last. Your participating shell dealer wants to see you at Comiskey Park. Schuler went seven and a third innings. He allowed only one run on that inside the park home run when Cruz, his feet went out from under him on the wet turf out there. He allowed three hits, one walk, and struck out seven. He gives way to Jim Willoughby. And Willow has picked up a couple of saves in his last three outings. His last outing when he saved the game against Cleveland two nights ago went two innings and allowed no runs on two hits and struck out a man. Twenty two thousand four hundred and eighty nine in the ballpark tonight. Here's the pitch to Campanaris and it's a strike. Twenty two thousand four hundred and eighty nine and Sergeant Bill Rafferty from the Police special detail was up here, and he guessed 22,000. So he was almost right on. Here's the pitch. Swing it the ground into short. Kessinger to second for one. Relay. Double play. Oh, the ball dropped out of Lamar's mitt. They get the front man and came within an instant of getting their third double play of the night, but Campanaris is on for the third time. That ball thrown to the outside part of the bag towards the outfield and in and out of the middle Lamar Johnson and a runner at first with two out now the batter is Toby Hera he's gotten on in an air bounced out to the pitcher on a fine play by Schuler, and he is single Willoughby out of the stretch tosses to the plate the runner going swing and a miss and off the hand of Naharadni and the umpire throws the ball out of play and he has to go back we foul tipped it so Campanaris goes back to first. Ball went off the hand of Naha. He got hit upper part of the knee earlier with a foul tip, and now that went off his throwing hand. One strike of the batter. Here's a toss over to first, the runner back. A freak inside the park home run when Cruz feet went out from under him on the wet turf and straight away center field. Plus another hit in this inning. Here's a swing and a miss. Strike two. Snap throw to first. The runner back. We're in the eighth. The White Sox leading four to one. Bannister and Levin have driven in all four runs. Two apiece. Willoughby out of the stretch. Here's the pitch. Runner not going. A pitch out. Parker has hit a three-run homer in the ninth inning. Makes that the fifth inning, his ninth of the year. And the Pirates have tied up Houston at 4-4. Right-hander ready. Runner not going. Here's the pitch. Swing and a grounder foul to the left side. A runner at first with two out. Three-run ball game. We're in the bottom of the eighth at Kansas City. The Royals leading the Tigers 5-1. to one. Detroit will have only one more crack at the Royals. That Kansas City Club has lost six of their last eight games, but if they win tonight, they'll go into first place. 
That's primarily because Oakland has lost seven in a row now. Right-hander ready. Out of the stretch, runner not going. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. A big cut by Hera. He strikes out to retire the side in the inning. One run on the sneak inside the park homer. Two hits, no errors, one man left on. If you're in the market for a new giant screen color TV and you demand value, quality, dependability, well, now's the right time to buy. It's clearance sale time at your Zenith dealer. The 1979 models are on the way, and your Zenith dealer's got to clear out the 1978s, and you're going to be pleasantly surprised at the drastic reductions you'll discover on giant screen 25-inch models, as well as the wide variety of beautiful decorative furniture styles available. Now, you can save up to $110 on a 1978 giant screen color TV. As little as $548.88 buys you all the performance-proved features of Zenith 25-inch color TV. But that's not all. There's inflation-fighting prices on all other Zenith products during the clearance sale. So you better make plans to visit your participating Zenith dealer now while he still has a variety of models to choose from. Remember... For value, quality, and dependability, don't miss the clearance sale of 1978 models at your Zenith dealer. Prices quoted are distributor suggested retail prices. WMOQ with cash and prizes and the great cure. All you need is your telephone and you could win. Call when we say call, and if you're the right caller, you'll win. The Great QA with great cash and great prizes for you. From your radio station, WMAQ. Lauren Brown back at Comiskey Park. White Sox leading 4-1 to one as we go to the bottom of the eighth. Wayne Nordhagen leads off against Matlock and takes the ball outside. Wayne 0 for 3 tonight against the tough left-hander. Grounded into a double play, struck out and grounded to short. Wayne had a big night last night against the Tribe going three for five with three RBIs and he takes a breaking ball inside, ball two. White Sox with a run in the first, two in the third, and one in the seventh. And the Rangers with a freaky, I guess that's the best way I could describe it, inside the park home run when Cruz's feet went out from under him in center field on the wet turf. Here's a swing and a foul upstairs. Ron Schuler went seven and a third innings, allowed one run on three hits. Walked one and struck out seven. So that means in 13 and a third innings against Texas, here's the pitch. Swing and a foul ball down the right side. First baseman Hargrove coming after it, and he's got it in front of the screen. Near the tarp down the first baseline, one out. That means Schuler in 13 and a third innings has allowed Texas two runs on seven hits. By the way, the run for the Rangers in the top of the eighth was their first run after being shut out for 17 innings. Did not get a run in the ninth two nights ago at Kansas City. They were blank for nine innings last night and seven innings here tonight. So there's one out. Lamar Johnson, one for three. A single back in the sixth. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a pop-up to the right side, carrying back towards the seat. Sundberg is over and cannot get it. Larry Barnett was right there, the home plate umpire. Could have called fan interference, but the fans did not interfere, according to Larry. And the ball dropped for a foul ball. Barnett at first tonight. Jim Evans at behind the plate, rather. Jimmy Evans is down at first. Derwood Merrill is at second base. And Marty Springstad is at third. One strike in the batter. The Yankees have tied up Seattle. Here's a strike in the outside corner. They came up with three runs in the eighth inning. Nettles, it is 11th homer of the year with nobody on. And Cliff Johnson, it is third of the year with a man on to tie up the Mariners. Here's the pitch swing and a two-hopper over to the third baseman, Harry. He's got it, and he throws Lamar out. And there's two out. Looking ahead to the ninth, the Rangers will have Bump Wills, Bobby Bonds, and Bobby Thompson coming up. If anybody should get on, Zisk would bat. And the batter is Naharadny. He's got on in an air in the second. He has struck out, and he's flat out to right. 
and he's taken his lumps behind the plate of foul ball off the knee and one off the hand. Left-hander in the windup. Here's the pitch. Swing and a grounder foul outside the first base bag. One strike in the batter. Matt Lack's been a tough luck pitcher on the road. He's lost five of his six games on the road. The Rangers have averaged less than two runs a game for him. The same is happening here tonight in the bottom of the eighth, trailing four to one, and the pitch low of all, one and one. So the Mariners having their troubles. Led seven to two at one time over the Yankees. Now it's seven to seven. Here's the pitch swing and a miss. A ball and two strikes. Milwaukee winning a doubleheader at Toronto. They've been hot lately. They've won seven in a row going after their eighth straight in the second game. Here's a swing and a grounder up the middle. Base hit. Now Haladny gets a two-out single here in the eighth, and George Orr to the batter. George has struck out, grounded out, and flied out in three trips. First with two down, John Matlack, a Pennsylvania product, works out of the stretch and the pitch to George, swing and a miss on a fastball, strike one. One strike in the batter. Left-hander ready, here's the pitch, breaking ball way inside, evens it up. One and one. Minnesota in the bottom of the seventh, leading Cleveland eight to one. Twins trying to win their third in a row. Left-hander ready, one-one pitch. Swing and a base hit to right. Arda gets on. Naharadney holds up at second. And the White Sox with runners at first and second with two out. And the batter, Don Kessinger, looking for his first hit of the night. White Sox got an unearned run in the first. With Alan Bannister on first and one out, they threw over to first. Allen was off to second, and Hargrove threw in the dirt. He was safe at second on an air. And he came home on Chet Lemon single to make it one to nothing. Then with one out in the third, Gar singled, came home on Bannister's triple, and then Lemon drove in his second run of the night, driving home Bannister to make it three to nothing. White Sox made it four to nothing. With two out in the seventh, Gar doubled, and Bannister singled him home for his second RBI of the night. It was four to nothing. Then a freaky inside the park home run accounted for the lone Texas run off the bat of designated hitter John Lowenstein when Henry Cruz's feet went right out from under him near the warning track in straightaway center field. That's where we're at now. Sox with two on, two out. Kessinger swings and hits a fly ball to left. Zisk coming over near the line. He's there, and that retires the side as he grabs it. In the inning, no runs, two hits, two left. We go to the ninth. Hang on to your seats. It's the White Sox four, Texas one. This sporty Chevy Monza. When you're driving down the road, and you're moving through a curve, and your car's looking good, it's showing lots of nerve. It's a Monza, a Chevrolet. Who ever thought a car that looked so good and moved so well would be quite so low? $659. That's the manufacturer's suggested retail price, including dealer preparation for Monza 2 Plus 2 Hatchback Coupe. Tax, license, destination charges, and available equipment extra. Chevy Monza, $36.59. A very stylish little number. Chevy Monza, 36.59. For a car so sporty and so well equipped, it's priced surprisingly low. Monza, See your local Chevrolet dealer now. Warren Brown back at Comiskey Park as we go to the ninth. The White Sox out in front here, four to one. It'll be the number two, three, and four hitters for the Rangers: Buck Wills, Bobby Bonds, and Bobby Thompson. 
three left-handed hitters in a row to face Jim Willoughby. Wills tonight 0 for 3. He's grounded into two double plays, sandwiched around a fly out to center field. Jim Willoughby came out in relief of Ron Schuler, got Campanaris to force Sunberg out and struck out Toby Harris. The White Sox pitchers have struck out eight Rangers tonight with Bonds, Thompson, and Zisk going down twice apiece. Bump Wills, the batter, facing Willoughby for the first time tonight. Right-hander in the windup in the pitch. And it's a strike. Fired. Racing in from third, looking for Wills to try to bunt his way on. Cruz way over in left center. Nordhagen deep and straight away right. Here's the pitch. Swing and a foul down the left side. He's out in front of him now. Two strikes. Gar playing in straight away left. An infield to Lamar Johnson at first. George Orta at second. Don Kessinger at short. And Greg Pryor at third, who now plays back with a two-strike count on Wills. Willoughby into the windup. Here's the two-strike pitch. Misses outside of all. White Sox with a run in the first, two in the third, and one in the seventh. Texas with a run in the eighth. Right-hander in the windup. The one-two pitch. Here's a swing and a foul to the right side. Off the tarp screen, and Lamar Johnson retrieves it. Oakland has been defeated by Boston. California has been defeated by Baltimore. Kansas City is leading by four over Detroit, five to one in the bottom of the eighth. Right-hander in the windup. Here's the one-two pitch. Swing and a foul. He just got a piece of it. Willoughby got a save against the Rangers. And I take that back. He did not get a save. He allowed no runs in two and two-third innings. At Texas the other night. Right-hander ready. The one-two pitch. Swing and a grounder to the right side. Orta's there. He's got it. Throws. One out. One down and right-hander Bobby Bonds. I think I told you three straight left-handed hitters, but Bobby, the only right-handed hitter in the top three here. Bonds tonight has struck out twice and he has grounded out to short. The fans, for some reason, are on Bobby Bonds. Is this thing you can understand because some of the comments this made. And the first pitch is a strike to Bobby. I tell you, Bobby's a class guy, a gentleman. Wasn't his fault he got traded. White Sox just felt they could not sign him and they wanted to get something in return, which was a smart move. Here's a breaking ball outside, evens it up at one and one. Bonds, when he left, talked about how much he enjoyed playing here and for the White Sox fans. Here's the one one delivery. Check swing and a ball outside. Two balls and a strike. Kansas City Royals beat Detroit 7-1. to one. Scoreboards got it a 5-1 ball game, but it was 7-1 to one a final. Here's a swing and a grounder to Pryor at third. He's got it. Throws across. In time. Two out. Two up and two down in the ninth. One more to go. Split off the winner over Billingham. The Kansas City Royals have just moved into first place by a percentage point over Oakland in a virtual tie. And the White Sox are with one out of moving to two and a half games out of first place. Willoughby in the windup. Some of the fans on their feet. Here's the pitch inside of all. Thompson has struck out twice tonight. Yankees batting in the bottom of the ninth, tied up with Seattle. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Strike in the inside corner. Again, Thompson shortening up as if the bunt. And the count is even up at one and one. Listen to this crowd. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Swing and a grounder to Orta. He's got it. Throws. Game is over. Sox win again. In the inning, let's listen to this crowd. 4-1 to one White Sox victory. Four to 
out. We'll be back with the totals and highlights right after this word. WMHU, where new red and white WMHU is going to make me rich bumper stickers could be worth thousands of dollars in cash and prizes to you. We have over $200,000 in cash and prizes, and we're giving it all away. For a chance to be a winner, pick up your free red and white WMHU bumper sticker from any participating True Value hardware store in the greater Chicago area and stick it on your car's rear bumper. If the Q-Truck stops you, you win. It's that easy. Stick it and win with WMHU. Sit in the shadows of some of baseball's all-time greats. Eddie Walsh, Red Faber, Ted Lyons, Billy Pierce, and many others, where you and your intimate group share the bullpen at Kimiskey Park. It's old yet new because it's a never-before area that was off-limits to all except mound greats. Now you can share their bench in a unique way to see the Sox with your friends. The exclusive bullpen is available for booking now, but hurry, the word is out and reservations are going fast. Call 924-1000 and ask for Danny to make your reservations for the bullpen at Chemiskey Park. Here are the happy totals as the White Sox now have won four in a row, nine of their last ten and 16 of their last 18. Four runs, ten hits and three errors, seven men left on. Texas, one run, three hits, four errors, and three men left on. The winning pitcher, Schuler, he's now two and one. Willoughby picks up his seventh save of the year, and the loser is John Matlack, who has now won five and lost seven. The White Sox jumped out in front early on an unearned run in the first inning. Gar won, Bannister forced him out, then Allen trying to steal second. They had him picked off, but Hargrove threw the ball in the dirt, and Allen was safe at second. And then Lemon singled him home, making it one to nothing. In the third, with one out, Gar singled, Bannister tripled him home, and Chet Lemon drove in his second run, singling home Bannister. And that made it three to nothing. The White Sox made it four to nothing when again Gar got on with a double with two out in the seventh and was singled home by Bannister. So Gar and Bannister, that made it four to nothing, scored two runs each. Bannister had three hits and drove in two runs, and Chet Lemon had two hits and drove in two runs. Texas got their lone run on a freaky inside the park home run when Henry Cruz, his feet went right out from under him in deep center field and the ball dropped behind him and Lowenstein went all the way around with an inside the park home run. Making it a four to one ball game. After that, a base hit. Willoughby came on with two out, make that one out in the eighth. He retired two batters and then retired the side in order in the ninth inning as the White Sox now have beaten Texas three out of four, and they have won four more in a row. They won seven in a row, you know, lost a game. Won five in a row, lost a game, and now have come back to win four in a row. The White Sox are now only two and a half games out of first. We'll check the scoreboard and the standings right after this word. <laughs> 